Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about TAP2 project updates, a new official IO board that's coming, Mistex updates, and more. Also check out my channel sponsor Mr. Addons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs, things like full Mr. setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. Aitor Gomez Garcia has released a new version of his fork of Mr. Main that has TAP2 integration. This version added a feature to have a cover for game loading screens and also a standby screen. Aitor also integrated the AO486 and PCXT cores to MGL files, so you should be able to use NFC cards to run DOS games on the Mr. FPGA. This will go great with a 3D printed floppy disk case that Bedroom Ninja created. I know it's modeled after a Commodore 64 floppy drive. However, I still wouldn't mind using it to load up DOS games on the Mr. FPGA and make believe they are floppy disks. You can read the Mr. FPGA forum thread to find out more about Aitor's work. Pierco posted a couple of videos showing the Fujitsu FM7 core booting. It may not seem like much, but getting to this point does require a lot of research and work. Pierco then posted a video showing the core and a real FM7 running side by side, and they look perfectly in sync. The Fujitsu FM7 is an early 1980s Japanese computer. The Game Boy MIDI core was updated to include the implementation of the Wave M noise voice channels. This completes all the available voices of the Game Boy. If you want to see it in action, check out the post which shows Modal Module playing a song with the core. The Game Boy MIDI core is great for musicians because it implements the Game Boy sound hardware and allows you to connect MIDI instruments to it. The next game in the Mr. FPGA Discord game challenge is Sonic CD. This challenge consists of the time trials on four different stages and they're all relatively quick. The challenge goes until March 22nd and you'll have to submit your scores to the Mr. FPGA Discord. Hans Bayer has received an updated Mistex baseboard and tested some of the features. Snack works, HDMI works, VGA works, JTAG for the Raspberry Pi microcontroller works, and audio works. There were some issues with switches, but that is fixed now. It's great to see the progression of this project as it will allow more FPGA boards to run Mr. Cores. Hans also posted a new FPGA board based on the Cyclone 5, which is the same chip that's used on a DE10 Nano. It only costs $99, but that doesn't mean you should go out and buy one. You can't just copy over a Mr. Cores to this and have them automatically run. You will still need developers to attain them and do the work to port cores over. Mr. Walrus posted about a recent update to the Nintendo 64 that includes a fix that helped Sharon the Wanderer 2. This fix allows for proper save support in the game and players can finally play the English fan translation. A link to the ROM patch is on the post by Mr. Walrus. Sorge, the maintainer of the Mr. Project, showed off images of a new I.O. board. Now, instead of having a dedicated digital I.O. board and a dedicated analog I.O. board, there will be only one board that can be converted to digital or analog I.O. This is done through a secondary A.V. board that, when attached, will make it act as an analog I.O. board, and when detached, will offer a slot for a secondary SD RAM module and give you the functions of the digital I.O. board. Analog video output will also be 24-bit. In order for this board to work, the framework has to be updated on the Mr. FPGA and also on all cores. No release date has been announced yet, but Sorge still has to update the hardware and framework, so it's important for this to be done first and for course to be updated ahead of time before official release. And this week's Sega Saturn core updates include, auto region selection was added, but this requires the latest unstable Mr. Main build. There were fixes to the VDP-1 chip that affected Burning Rangers, fixes to the VDP-2 chip that affected Groove on Fight, Grandia, Rayman Anguish Lagoon, and Sakura Wars. There were SMPC fixes that helped out Darkseed, sound processor fixes that helped out Afterburner, Virtua Fighter 2, Blastwind, and some level overflows were fixed for the sound processor. SCU coprocessor fixes that helped with pandemonium speed, and there are also some general accuracy fixes. And finally, there were CPU fixes that helped with Assault Suit Lanos and Slayer's Royal. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. 
Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and this bell icon to get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.